Thank you so much, President Carson. And I'm joined today by Molly Mayburn, who has been leading this project. Uh, next slide. Uh, I think you all know that currently Howard Terminal uh, has been used primarily as a parking lot. Uh, it's shallow waterways do not make it ideal for the modern uh, version of ships that really generate the economic activity at the Port of Oakland. Uh, you know that the current value of this land is incredibly small uh, to both the city of Oakland and to Alameda County with regard to generating public revenues. Next slide. The county alone would stand to benefit from $16 million a year in direct revenues that would be on top of one-time construction revenues, as well as an additional $5 million a year to ACTC for transportation projects throughout Alameda County. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us. Uh, I know that we are in the middle of a pandemic, but let us meet this moment to literally transform a part of our city that has been neglected, that has been sealed off from public use, that is no longer economically productive and has this incredible potential to create tremendous public benefit for generations to come. Next slide. Um, this is kind of the sources and uses of the Enhanced Infrastructure Financing District, and a reminder that the Oakland A's are essentially financing all of this project. Uh, roughly $6 billion of direct investment to build the vertical uh, project. Uh, Dave already went through what that entails. And then, of course, the very small tax increment, the project tax increment, money that will not exist if this project does not happen. So, so I believe it is fair for us to say that the A's are paying for everything because this these dollars are coming from their project. But as far as a proportion of the total investment in both the project itself and its community benefits, uh, the public participation in the project tax increment is 3% for each the city and the county. And where does that go? Into public parks that we all agree enhance the health of our residents, into affordable housing that we know is critical for health. And of course, to the public infrastructure that will enhance safety and will allow the entire region to benefit from this project. These are the on-site costs. This does not include the cost for off-site improvements, which I will talk about in a second. Next slide. Um, a big piece, uh, a big question that you had in um, the excellent letter, uh, President Carson, that you sent to me, and I hope everyone got an opportunity to read. I apologize, it was a lengthy response that I sent to you yesterday. Uh, yeah, but, I just uh, got it this morning, and unfortunately at 8.30. This morning, I, I, even though it was sent out yesterday and uh, after hours, sorry. Well, we were trying to uh, give you thorough responses to your excellent questions. So I'm gonna touch on a couple of them in this presentation. You asked, what, <laughs> what are the other revenues that the city of Oakland will be realizing and what is the city doing with those revenues? Uh, as you may recall, one of the city's pledges during the adoption of the non-binding term sheet was that the city will be responsible for all off-site transportation and infrastructure improvements. Um, we anticipate pledging our additional incremental tax revenues, and that would include property taxes in lieu of vehicle license fees, parking taxes, sales taxes, business license taxes, utility consumption, and transient occupancy, TOT taxes. Uh, we would be pledging those project-based increment to service a debt that we anticipate would be a $150 million limited obligation bond. And I stress limited obligation bond. That means that this would be no recourse to the city's general fund like you 
uh, President Carson. We have learned our hard lessons from that Raider deal. We will not put our general fund at risk, but these additional project generated revenues can be pledged to help pay for the significant offsite improvements that we all agree and know are necessary to make this project successful. Um, these offsite infrastructure improvements are going to include the required mitigation measures that uh, are, are part of the final and certified uh, environmental impact report, transit first connections that we are committed to as a policy matter, safety improvements, especially to make sure that that Port of Oakland activity is safely separated from the mixed use activity that is already present at Jack London Square, as well as the seaport compatibility measures that will also be part of this project. Today, we have a conservative estimate that the total cost of these improvements will be $352 million. We anticipate that that uh, will be increased with further due diligence. So the $150 million limited obligation bond will be a portion of meeting that obligation. Uh, we do have potential availability of state funding that was awarded in the recent state budget action. And of course, we are aggressively pursuing particularly federal infrastructure dollars that we are very hopeful uh, will be coming forth from Washington, DC. And just again to emphasize, Neither the county nor the enhanced infrastructure financing district that we are discussing today would have any responsibility for the costs of offsite infrastructure. That is solely the responsibility of the city of Oakland, but that is how we will be using our non property tax. The, the, the other increment that we are not pledging to the EFID that we are talking about doing with you will all be pledged to this limited liability, uh, uh, this limited obligation bond. Uh, next slide. Uh, questions have been asked about the affordable housing. Uh, we did reach uh, some terms in the non-binding term sheet with regard to affordable housing. Uh, most significantly, uh, the city of Oakland has both residential and commercial affordable housing requirements that allow developers to meet those obligations either through the payment of a fee or through the construction on site of affordable units. The A's have committed to meeting both the residential and commercial affordable housing requirements through on site construction of affordable housing rather than the payment of any fees. Uh, the A's have agreed to build 15% affordable units on site. That is roughly twice what is required to meet their legal obligations under the city of Oakland's various policies as well as redevelopment law. Uh, the Oakland A's will fully pay for, without future reimbursement, the affordable housing units that are necessary to meet those residential and, co and commercial affordable housing requirements. Anything above those requirements will be eligible for future reimbursement if and when those increment dollars are available. Next slide. Uh, this breaks down the direct fiscal benefit to Alameda County. Uh, again, one-time construction tax revenues of $68 million for you to apply to the pressing needs that you have so articulately uh, talked about today. Uh, in addition to that, you will have another $5 million, roughly $5 million a year for various um, dedicated uh, functions like your early childhood education uh, program, health care, homelessness, and then an additional $5 million a year that will go to ACTC for countywide transportation needs. Uh, that is on top of the $10 million roughly that would be dedicated towards the purposes of the Enhanced Infrastructure Financing District. Again, all related to public health. Next slide. We spoke before that the halo effect and economic impacts for the region will be tremendous. 25,000 new construction jobs uh, with some of the most progressive 
agreements under MAPLA, as well as using CenterPoint as a jobs agreement model, uh, 7,100 new permanent full-time jobs, again, subject to more union agreements than any project in the history of California. And then an estimated $7.3 billion in regional economic impact just in the first 10 years alone. This is all on top of the direct tax revenues that will come from the project itself. Next slide. This is not the Raiders deal. We all learned from our mistakes of the past. This is financially responsible. And President Carson, this is also why an offsite EFID was rejected by the city council and the city of Oakland, because it would not be responsible. It would be a public subsidy. It would be taking our general uh, uh, tax revenues that were generated not from this project that would otherwise go to support our uh, obligations that we have. We have all learned that that is not acceptable, nor prudent, nor responsible. And so this uh, structure allows us to let the project pay for the project itself, does not place our taxpayers or our general funds at any risk. And that is why we, just like what we were able to do under redevelopment, are not asking you to be in the sports business, but asking you to be in the affordable housing and public parks business along with us to be our hometown heroes, to actually be the winning ingredient that will allow this project to move forward so that we can together reap the incredible public benefits as well as keep our beloved Oakland A's rooted in Oakland. This is the moment. We have waited a long time to find some certainty around a new home for the Oakland A's. Some would say decades. This is the moment for us to come together as a region to say that we believe in this visionary project that will benefit our residents, our agencies for generations to come. I welcome any further questions to Molly Mayburn who knows every detail of this project. And I thank you so much for giving your time and attention to this matter today. Thank you.